Welcome to Libra Decans. This is a summary video on the Two of Swords, Three of Swords and Four of Swords. As always, I've uh, opened the presentation with a small caption to summarize uh, the essence of this trinity. Peace is restored once we confront truth. Only then can we recover from sorrow. And so Libra being the sign of of balance and justice and order and harmony. It is ruled by Venus, so it is an energy about love, attraction and matters of the heart. Let's look into all three cards and dive in a little bit deeper. The first card or the first decan is the Two of Swords and this is what we call Moon in Libra. The moon is represented in the tarot by the high priestess. The zodiac sign is justice, which is the major arcana card for Libra. And the decan is also justice. And this is an energy of cardinal air. Cardinal air is an energy of initiation, being on the forefront and being bold. Being the one to make the first move. Let's talk about the symbolism in the card of Two of Swords. Now, in the Golden Dawn, this card is referred to as Peace Restored. The moon itself is featured on the card, but this particular moon is, in fact, a cardinal moon. And it is about having to make a decision based on something that is going to have a big impact. Something that is not a light decision, it's a cardinal decision. And anything cardinal, as I said, is uh, on the forefront. It is uh, going to implement change and it's going to implement change in a big way. The woman in the card, she's obviously holding two swords, but she obviously wants to um, protect her heart. She has her swords over her heart. So in many ways, this card can also be seen as an energy of self-preservation, not wanting to get hurt, not wanting to make the wrong decision. Wherein, really, by using our intuition with the high priestess of the energy of the moon and being able to see beyond uh, what we would just normally see at face value is how we are going to make this decision or how we're going to move forward. But at the same time, this woman is actually quite at peace. You can tell because of the way that she's sitting, but she's also sitting in front of water, which is behind her. And this water is actually very calm. Um, so there's a stillness, there's a meditative energy to this card where it does involve contemplation. It does involve making decisions, but it also with the blindfold there indicated doesn't mean that this woman is going to be influenced by outside opinions or outside influences. By having the blindfold, it is an energy of being able to not being distracted. The Justice card overall is the zodiac sign of Libra, or the zodiacal card of Libra. Um, and the Justice card sits halfway um, within the Tarot Majors because it is number 11. And it's almost like the turnstool. Justice is also um, represented here in the form of uh, a Judeo-Christian version. But if we think about our, the Egypt, uh, Egypt, Egyptology, um, it can be also akin to uh, Mart, who is the decider of who passes go and who doesn't. What does the truth prevail? Is this person um, being judged based on uh, the truth? And what is going to be the verdict? And the verdict will lie within the scales. And the scales are also represented here uh, on the card. So with the High Priestess and the Moon, um, the energy of Moon in Libra is not just, you know, being able to make a, a decision that will have a big impact on somebody's future or future, you know, relationships even. You're sitting on the fence about um, whether or not you would like to start a relationship with someone or... Um, depending on the other cards that surround this card at the time of your reading, 
um, it will impact, you know, the essence of, of what that decision is pertaining to. But it is a very, uh, you know, strict energy. It's a receptive energy. If you can also sort of feel as well, it's an intelligence that is being almost like these two swords you could you could view as antenna, uh, picking up on Keta, picking up on um, left and right, right and wrong, um, that, that balanced energy of mercy and severity. Let's move into the next card, which is the Three of Swords. Now, this is what we call Saturn in Libra. And Saturn is represented by the World card. Um, we have the Libra Major there. And then we also have the De Decanic Rulership and the next uh, Air Decan uh, or Sub Decan of this card is Aquarius. And that's represented by the Star. The Three of Swords can indicate uh, sorrow as depicted by the Golden Dawn. And sorrow is um, obviously heartbreak, disappointment, because it's a number three, it's also an understanding, as it would be sitting in Bina. But not only that, this card can often represent third parties, three people, a three-way conversation. Um, you know, with the two of swords, it's, it's at peace, it's at ease. But then we have three, and it's almost an energy of two's company and three's a crowd. Um, so when we experience the three of swords... These are lessons that are to be learned. These are lessons about love, um, relationships, and and truth. And sometimes if something runs its course, whether it be a rela relationship, a romantic relationship, or a business relationship, sometimes it can be very painful, um, even though we know it's the right thing to do. The world card obviously is a binding contract, but it's also a completion. It's uh, the wreath is a, a victory, but it's also something that here that has run its course. You know, life is like a circle. Everything joins up at the back. You'll also notice on the world card that it does feature the four fixed signs, the Karubic energy. And so this is, uh, you know, another uh, nod to the realities of life, the reality of, of what happens to us. The star is there to bolster hope, to not let go of our hopes and dreams and to know that, you know, once we go through the cycle of pain and suffering, there's always a healing. You know, we're always, we're being spiritually guided no matter what the situation. And in many ways, rejection is spirit's protection. Um, when... Again, a heart breaks. The heart is a muscle, very much like when we go to the gym. We rip muscle in order for it to grow back bigger and stronger. Well, the heart is no different. But it is a deciding, vac uh, deciding factors that come into play here. Everything is always in the balance. Everything is always being weighed by the scale. Um. The Egyptian mythology behind the scale as well is the heart and the feather. And when um, Anubis was holding the scale and decided whether or not um, this person was going to heaven or hell, if the heart outweighed the feather, then it would be going to hell. And if the feather was lighter um, than the heart... Um, the person would be going to heaven. A very antiquated stories, but they still have weight. They still have um, a presence, you know, to, to keep your heart light and full of love um, is, is an energy of going towards the light to transcend. If your heart is heavy and it outweighs the feather, then you need to lighten your heart, lighten, your, lighten the load, lighten the pain. But generally speaking, Saturn in Libra is there to teach us lessons about love, relationships and healing. And just remember, with every heartache, there is a healing. 
If we look at Jupiter in Libra, which is the next card, four of swords, a fours in the um, in the in numerology are, are about stability. The sword being of the mind, uh, it is mental health, recuperation, taking time out, meditation, and really downloading what has happened in the previous two cards in order to fight another day in order to make new decisions, come together again, recuperate. Know that the wheel of life continues to turn as it does with the wheel of fortune. So Jupiter in Libra is four of swords and it is about, you know, new luck, good fortune, other opportunities coming through. The wheel is now turning in your favor. Unfortunately, we have to experience pain before we can experience joy. Just like mothers when they have children, there's a lot of pain there before they experience the joy of birth. Life is no different. The lover's card is the third decan, which is Gemini. And the lover's card is about choice. It's about decisions that we make, who we make them with, who you know we choose to be with whether it be in a job, in a marriage, in a friendship group, um, in many settings. But again, the wheel will turn in your favor once there is also forgiveness and an opening of the heart, an opening of a blessing. The, you'll notice as well that the lead light candle or the lead light window in the Four of Swords as well is very similar uh, imagery to the Six of Cups, which is Sun in Scorpio. And Scorpio being an energy of darkness, it is about shining light where there is darkness. And offering, opening your heart to forgiveness and healing. So Jupiter, again, is a traditional ruler of Sagittarius, which is the opposite sign of Sagittarius, uh, of Gemini. It does indicate long distance travel, higher learning, but also the belief, what you believe in, you know, the wonder of the world. And when we have justice, Jupiter and the lover's card, you know, there is justice for those who have an open heart. There is justice there for those who, who have, who believe in a higher purpose, in a higher, you know, offering that the wheel does eventually turn. Because if we look above with Saturn and then we look down in Jupiter on the far left, it's really quite interesting how at one point the energy is fixed and now it is mutable. It actually starts at the top being cardinal, fixed and mutable. Being that the moon is cardinal with moon in Libra, fixed being Saturn in Libra, or the four fixed signs, and then Jupiter ruling Sagittarius is of mutable energy, as is the lovers. So with enough time, this night that is meditating almost at a vigil, at a vigil is almost going to be ready to fight another day with the golden sword that is alongside of the tomb or alongside of the the bed that he is lying on. So making decisions, working through pain, and coming out in a form of meditative recovery and forgiveness and opening up your heart and asking spirit for those downloads to heal is part of the wheel of life. It is part of the wheel that turns. And if we are open to this belief, then we will always be served justice and what we deserve. Let's talk about the tree of life uh, structure. So with the swords, we have each of the swords in each of the numbers moving down the tree. And then once we hit the ten of swords at the bottom in Malkut, we will then make our way back up. But for now, it's just a snapshot to indicate the planet, the zodiac and the decan. And then obviously the court cards that sit on the tree. The two of swords 
will reference Hokmah and wisdom. What is the wisdom that we hold to make strong decisions? And then with the Three of Swords, we call on Bina, or the Queen of Swords, for counsel in order to deal with the pain. How do we separate ourselves from that? Now, the Queen of Swords is often known as also the card of Aquarius. And the King of Swords is often known as the card of Libra because it's the first iteration. It's cardinal, whereas the Queen is fixed. But if we keep distance and we keep our head above the clouds, we can make clear decisions about who we spend our time with how we go about our working day and decisions about life in general and how to develop relationships that will bring us, you know, the best possible outcomes. But however, all relationships don't always end well, but it is like anything, how we cope with adult relationships and what we learn from adult relationships that restore peace and order an emotional balance. The fours as well in the final card there is also um, restoring mental health. Four legs on a table, stable table. Four swords, there's a lot more stability there. So I hope you enjoyed this quick summary video of Libra in the decans. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave the comments below. Um, and once again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I will see you in the next class.